I've received a few questions about using a specific outlet within ResSim before other outlets become involved. And typically this question will deal with the use of a hydropower plant. The user will want to make sure that the hydropower plant is fully utilized before other outlets are involved. Now, since ResSim is a rule-based simulation program, you may be tempted to think that the best way to handle this is through trying to use rules within ResSim. Uh, in some cases, you might be able to deal with it, but I feel that that, that can be somewhat difficult and, and maybe even a little bit limiting. So my preference is to uh, try a different technique or to use a different technique to prioritize one outlet over another outlet. Um, and that's what this video is going to focus on. So what we wanted to do is start by looking at the pool when it's in the conservation pool or the conservation zone. So if you remember in ResSim, that you can specify as many zones as you want, but it'll default to top of inactive, top of conservation, and top of flood. So in this schematic, you can clearly see that the we're in we're below the top of conservation. So you're in the conservation zone or conservation pool. So if we go look at REST SIM, you can see that I have a flood control zone at elevation 150, conservation zone at elevation 125, and the inactive zone at elevation 100. And I do have a minimum release that's applied to the reservoir. And this minimum release is 400 CFS. We can also go look at the physical data of the reservoir. So we have an uncontrolled outlet this is a uh, has an outlet elevation of 160. It shouldn't come into play during this example. We have a power plant. It has a hydraulic capacity of 500 CFS, and we have a controlled outlet that also has a hydraulic capacity of 500 CFS. So if you recall, when we're in the conservation zone, ResSim wants to hold on to everything that it possibly can unless it sees some type of required or minimum release. So in this case, we have a minimum release of 400 CFS. Now this simulation that I'm running, it is starting within the conservation zone. If we go look at the alternative and the look back, you can see in the main stem reservoir that was starting at 115, the top of conservation was 125. So in this case, we are starting in the conservation zone. So I'm going to run this simulation, it runs very fast, and we're going to take a look at this plot. You can see we did start, remember that this dash vertical line is the look back period. So that separates the look back period from the simulation period. You can see that we did start at elevation 115 and the pool is slowly rising up to the top of conservation zone. And the reason for that is we have an inflow, the inflow shown by this dark line. We have an inflow of 500 CFS and we have an outflow of 400 CFS. So those results make sense since inflow is greater than outflow, we are getting a rising pool elevation. We do know that we are releasing the 400 CFS. We do know that that comes from that minimum release rule. What we don't know is how that is being released until we go look at a different plot. So here we can go look at plot releases. Remember, vertical dash line is outlook, uh, is look back. Um, so we have 500 CFS in the look back period. So I must have specified 500 for the power plant, and I must have had just 500 going out of the power plant. But you can see that when this simulation starts, that the power plant drops to 200. And also the red line rises to 200 and the red line is the controlled outlet. So we have this balance between the controlled outlet and also the power plant. So each one of them is releasing 200 CFS, but that's not really what we want. We'd want all of it to be released from the power plant. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna make a slight change. We're gonna go in uh, to the reservoir properties 
and under operations we're going to use a specified release allocation. For right now for this dam, this main stem reservoir, we have this balanced release allocation. So it's balancing between the power plant and the controlled outlet. Now instead of doing that we want to do sequential and we want power plant first and then controlled outlet and you can use these arrows to switch the um, the order of these but the order was correct so we want power plant first then controlled outlet so we can hit apply then okay and then i'm going to recompute this the initial plot should look exactly the same because we're still releasing 400 but where we should have a difference is when we look at the plot releases and in this case you can see that the green line which is the power plant is releasing all 400 ZFS, whereas the uncontrolled outlet, which is the blue line, is releasing nothing. Um, it, basically, the water doesn't get high enough to release out of that one. And then the red line, which is the controlled outlet, also is releasing zero ZFS because we have not reached the capacity of the power plant. So that's um, uh, the way that I would use the hydropower first. Now, one question that comes up is, uh, might be about the priority. Now, rules still have the priority over release allocations. So if I were to add another rule, so I'm gonna go back to my rule set and we're in the conservation zone. So I'm going to actually add a rule and I want, um, When I send 10 CFS out of the controlled outlet. And I'm going to specify that I want it to go out of the controlled outlet. So you may have some sort of environmental flow that has to come out of the controlled outlet. Um, so in this case, we're going to send 10 CFS out of that. And we'll just do it as a very simple function of date. And we're going to do a minimum of 10. So now what I expect to see is 10 coming out of the controlled outlet, and then it'll look at my release allocation to determine how it wants to break up the rest of the release. And since we do have sequential with power plant being used first, we should be getting 390. So let's see if that works. And I'll just go right to plot releases. And here you can see that the red line does rise to 10 and the green line instead of being all 400 for the power plant, it's dropped down to 390. We can also test this for when we have a rise into the flood pool. So here we're getting up above conservation zone and we're rising into the flood pool. So to demonstrate how this works within ResSim, I'm going to make a slight change to the alternative. And we're going to make this change within the look back. So remember that the top of conservation was 125. So we're going to actually start this within the flood pool. And then we're going to see what happens. Okay. I think that should work. So first of all, let's look at our plot and make sure. And here you can see that, you now again, the, that uncontrolled outlet, that was set at a very high elevation. So that is not coming into play in this run. But we all set at 135. And you now ResSim is trying to release as much as it possibly can. And in this case, it, it's continuing to drop until it gets back to conservation. So in this case, the release allocation really isn't coming into play because it's going to release as much as it possibly can because we don't have any other rules limiting it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the flood pool and we're going to develop a new rule and then test the behavior of that. So in the flood zone, I want to do a new rule 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a max of 800 CFS. And we're just going to have it operate from the, the reservoir. And we'll make it a function of date. And this is going to be a maximum, because remember, when you're in the flood zone, RESIM wants to release as much as it possibly can, unless it sees something that limits its release. And in this case, we have an 800 CFS maximum release. Now, if I didn't have the release allocation, it should split it uh, between the two outlets, 400 and 400. But since I do have this release allocation, then I should see 500 out of the power plant and then 300 out of the controlled outlet. So we're going to go and remember that this controlled outlet of 10 is, is only applying in the conservation zone. So let's go see if our assumption is correct. So we're going to rerun it. And then we're going to plot our releases. And in this case here, you can see that once the simulation begins, you are getting 500 out of the power plant and you're getting 300 out of the controlled outlet. And if I go back to the reservoir properties, I go to my release allocation. If I then change this to balanced and then hit apply and then rerun it, and I do plot releases, here you can see that now it truly is once again balanced with 400 CFS out of the power plant and then 400 CFS out of the controlled outlet. So hopefully you found this helpful and this makes prioritizing which outlet is being used. Hopefully this makes it much easier and much uh, more straightforward for you. Um, I appreciate you watching the video and if you found it helpful and want to know when additional videos come out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.